Hello and welcome to ChiefTutor.com's quick tip of the week with the Chief Architect 3D Viewer. Now, Chief Architect, if you go to ChiefArchitect.com, they have a couple of different options with their 3D Viewer mode. One is this one you'll find on the website where um, the person who built the model for you can send you the model or send you a part of it. And uh, you can stream through the um, kitchen part or whatever part he sends you like this. And there's different viewing options and things like that. But there's also this one that not many people know about it's called the desktop viewer download and that allows you to view your model in a much better way a much more specific way and you can uh, view it completely inside and out and the whole thing so just fill out your information here and click request viewer and they'll send you a link to download the program once the program's downloaded into your computer it'll look something like that chief architect x9 viewer and you just double click to open it up and you don't have to associate the plan i I personally don't, but if you do, well, whatever. And the first thing you'll see is this Chief Architect Viewer, and you'll want to use either Open Plan or Open Layout, whichever your client has sent you. Uh, usually the architect or the designer or the engineer, or whoever's using Chief Architect to build your model, they built it most likely as a plan file. So that's what you'll probably choose. So you want to say Open Plan File, and then you'll navigate to the desktop of where your client sent you the plan. I have a uh, plan here is we'll use an example and I'll click open up and it opens up into the plan file and you'll notice there's some icons at the top so there's some fun things to do first there's the plan that loads in your uh, plan and you can use your scroll ball on your mouse your scroll wheel excuse me on your mouse to wheel in and out and to do it directionally uh, just like with most things wherever your cursor is that's where it's going to zoom in and out too so if I roll in on my cursors here and roll out that's where it gave me a clean look if I want to look at the master bath over here I put my cursor over here and start rolling in there and I can get into detail like that so that's the first way of method of using it you also notice there's open file which you can open another plan file you can save the plan file that you're on just in case you make changes to it you you can print which is really nice and you can turn layer displays on and off layer displays are certain things that you might want to see or not want to see like cabinet based cabinets I have some gray boxes here that dictate my cabinet bases and I can turn them on and off in the model as as I need to and you'll see them disappear if uh, you want them turned off there's no real huge reason to use that. I just leave on what's whatever the client sent you which probably should be on. Uh, there's the tape measure tool, which is great because if you need to get a specific dimension that may be not labeled on the plans, you just take the tape measure and holding down your left mouse button, you just drag from point A to point B that you want to see the dimension. Uh, there's also the text tool. For instance, let's say I didn't want the sink here, I want the sink on the island. I could take the text tool, left click on it one time, come into the plan, left click it a second time and say, move this sink and click OK. I can also add an arrow to it. Well, first, let's look at this version. If I come back up to the selection tool, I can also hit my space bar on my keyboard. It's the same thing as hitting the selection tool. This allows me to grab my text and move it out of the way of anything that might hurt it. Uh, I can expand it. I can shrink it. I can use these grab bars to move it around. This particular center one allows you to move it up and down or left and right. Once you have it where you want, you can come back to the text tool and you can add an arrow. And so I can click holding down my left mouse button and I'm just going to drag up to the sink and let go. And there I see the arrow pointing right to where I want it. And I come over here and I just save the plan. So next time I send the plan back to my builder or a guy who built it in Chief Architect for me, he can see the notes that I've made. And of course, you can make these notes more pronounced. You can double click it. You can change its color. Like, let's say you wanted to go into red, make it all bright red. First, select the text that you want to change and select the color that you want to do. You can even increase the size, like let's say we go to 12 in red. So that way it stands out and most likely he won't miss the note that you're trying to prove to him. Some of the other cool features are the camera tool features. Camera tools are the best tool. So let's just take the first one, the very first camera tool. And if I move down out of my model, I'm going to take my cursor and now it's turned into the camera mode. And I'm going to left click on my camera and point towards my house. You'll see like a little camera up here. See that? 
and I can kind of point it in the direction wherever I want to look. And the further you point it out, the more it's going to rotate. So I like to point it in a little bit. I don't want to point it way out here, but I do want to look at that front door. I'm just going to point it a little bit so I can rotate a little bit at a time. And I simply let go. And it should open a new tab. You'll see a new tab of form up here, and it gives you the model. And you also see your cursor is now multi-directional. So if I hold down my left mouse button, I can easily drag left or right, up or down, and see where I want to go. I can also use my famous roll or scroll wheel on your mouse. And so if I scroll way out like this, I can see further. And of course, I can roll in and say I want to see this part of the roof, and I just keep rolling on in. So that's a fun little device to play with. Also, you can hold down the roller the rolling direction, and you can pan left or right. You can do all these functions right here as well because you'll see all these different ones. You can 3D focus on an object. Let's say we 3D focus on the front door, and it'll take us right to the front door. It's a nice little handy tool. Moving the mouse about takes up right where you left off and just keeps on going. You can fly through surfaces right through the front door and go into the kitchen and check that out. So it's a real handy tool. There's also, uh, when you want to go back to the plan, you want to exit out of the tab and you'll be back into the main tab. And you can use this one, the perspective full overview. And that gives you a sight of the whole plan from far away and you can easily rotate it around and see inside or out as you need. In this case, again, I can scroll way in and come inside anytime I want and fly right back outside anytime I want. And since it's so far away, I can easily see the lot and everything that he built around the plan. Again, I could take this tab and I can move it over to the right side or left side. And that way I can have my 3D on while I have my 2D on as well. Just remember to move the mouse where you want to view and use your roller on your mouse to roll in and out. If you're using a laptop, it can become quite difficult. So it's a lot better if you have a mouse. Maybe you've got a little mouse attachment for your laptop and be good. So there's different views here, and you can play around with them. One here is the floor overview. So I just want to see the first floor with no roof or anything. That's kind of a neat little view. So it's like a dollhouse view. It claps it off on the top. <clears throat> so you can see from, the down, uh, from up above, you can see the whole house. Let's go back to a few more of these. Um, let's take a look at the framing overview. This is kind of a neat little feature, especially for framers. Because now they can come in and take a look at that. You can see all the framing of the whole house, the headers above the windows and the doors, the inside vaulted ceilings, the roof framing. I mean, it's all there for you to explore, even the stairs, which is really nice. <clears throat> Some of the other functions would be a cross section. This is a great little tool. If I left click on that, I'm going to zoom my model out a bit and I want a cross section of the front of the house. So I'm going to stand out in the front, click and drag towards the front of the house. And it'll give me a nice clean cross section of the front of the house. And again, you can zoom in or out as you need to. You can also take the cross section from the inside. Let's say I'm standing right in front of the cooktop. I'm going to click and drag towards the cooktop. It'll literally cut the whole house in half. And there's my cooktop. There's where I started to zoom in, and that's where it created. And this is how it would cut the roof, and this is how the rest of the house would look because I cut it right there. So let's cut it where the stairs are because that's always fun. So I'm going to come over here to this double set of stairs and click and drag across the stairs. <clears throat> And now I can see how the stairs are working all the way from my basement plan to my second floor plan. Kind of a neat little option. Next option is going from floor to floor. And that's what these numbers come in handy for. So I can go to the second floor, go back down to the first floor, or go back to the attic. And any floor that I stop on, I can view with my viewing tools using that full camera. I'm now on the second floor. And let's say I came up the stairway and I want to look right at the top of the stairway. What's the first thing I'm going to see? So I just generate a camera view, and there it is. This is an attic space, so he didn't have it finished. And then when he goes in, he has the rest of the house finished there. And again, I can see down the stairwell, even go down the stairwell, go back outside. <clears throat> again, the camera will take you wherever you'd like to go, which is a really nice feature. So you can really view every part of your model. Like let's say you want to get into the bathroom, see what happened in this particular bathroom, so you can see exactly. So that camera tool is very handy, and the floor flop in between one and two is very handy. All these buttons on the bottom are different ways to look or zoom in and out. For instance, the first one allows you to zoom in a specific area. Holding down my left mouse button, I drag over the area I want to zoom in, and it'll zoom that in. I can zoom closer or further away, depending on if I click these things, as well as repositioning the plan. 
These are different ways to reposition the plan so you can see what you want to see. And then there's another uh, aspect to Chief, which is really nice, called the Reference Floor Display. And I'm going to click that on. All of a sudden, in red, you'll see the first floor walls appear on the second floor. Remember, I'm still on the second floor. So I can see now which walls line up with the downstairs. So if I have a suggestion to my customer to say, let's move this wall, and I'm going to click this wall. Oh, sorry, it won't let you move walls, windows, and doors. That's good. That's actually a good feature because the builder doesn't want you to mess up his plan. He probably wants you to just say, hey, leave a note and say you can move the wall. But you can clearly see in this reference display layer which walls line up with the walls below. <coughs> and that'll really help. So that's been uh, messing with Chief Architect's client viewer. Again, remember to save the file once you're done, and you can send it right back to your customer. Uh, hope you learned something new. Thanks so much for watching this little video, and feel free to watch more quick tip videos here at ChiefTutor.com.